I'd love to share with you my favourite question I've done recently for A-level physics because it's about bikes. Now most of the time when I've done questions and I've seen there to do with bikes and exams it's either looking at dynamos which are old technology that nobody uses or it's to do with maybe a cyclist going along a level road at a constant speed which is kind of boring. This question was actually about uh, hydraulic brakes and the link between pressure, volume and temperature. Now, even if you know nothing about bikes, you could still answer the question, provided you know the underlying physics. And it's an important kind of question, which often students find a little bit tricky because it's quite hard to prepare for. Now, in A-level physics, there are three different assessment objectives. The first one, A01, is worth about 33% of all of your marks in the exams. And this is about you demonstrating your knowledge of physics. So the first part of this question, part three, was looking at um, actually identifying what Q represents in this equation. That is just a fact that you just have to know. And that's the kind of thing you learn maybe as you've got flashcards, as you're looking through lists of definitions, and also based on a lot of the work that you've done in lessons. So A01, these are often relatively straightforward to prepare for because it's just learning facts about the physics course. A02 is where it gets a little bit more tricky because this is you applying your knowledge to new situations. And in total, it's worth about 42% of all of the marks in your A-level physics exams. And this is a great example of it. This is about an unfamiliar context that most people won't be familiar with. But in the question, it outlines all of the information you need to answer the question, bearing in mind you do have the underlying physics skills and we're just applying it to a different situation. So this question here, you might not know anything about what the hydraulic brake lines look like, but there's a diagram that kind of shows the key points. And then of course you need to relate that to what you currently know about pressure, volume and temperature. And that then allows you to answer the question. And these are often the questions that students find a bit tricky. They'll say things like, well, we've never been taught about disc brakes. That doesn't matter. You don't need to know about disc brakes. You just need to be able to read the question, comprehend what it's asking, and then you can then just relate that to what you currently know. Oh, and finally, the third assessment objective, AO3, this is worth about 25% of your total mark. And this is about you interpreting and analyzing data. And of course, the best way to do that is just to do as many past paper questions as possible. I think I keep saying that in every video at the moment, but the more past papers you do, the more chance you get to see data from maybe practical experiments, and then you can sort of link that to maybe what you've already done in practicals in the lab. So this question was a question that had parts of A01 and parts of A02 within it. It allowed you to maybe think about how physics is related to everyday life. And also it's a kind of question that for some people doing the paper, they might get lucky and they might really relate to that. But if you find a question that you don't understand and you don't know what it's talking about because maybe you've never heard of that space mission before, then it doesn't matter. These are just questions in unfamiliar context and you need to know that you've got all the skills to actually answer them. They're not going to ask you about something that you need to know about beforehand that isn't mentioned in the specification. Anyway, uh, let's head back to my studio now and I'll show you how I approach this question. And of course, if you want to watch the full video for the full exam paper, you can find that over at alevelphysicsonline.com. So here we go with the actual exam questions. Now, if you're unsure about any of this, don't worry, because this is from the engineering option for AQA. So some of this isn't the kind of content that most people will have covered, but I just want to highlight the A01, A02 and A03 answers. So the first one um, is about the first law of thermodynamics, uh, Q equals delta U plus W. What does Q represent? Well, here, if you know your physics, if you've done your revision, this is a simple, easy mark. It's a kind of 30 second process to just write down that Q is representing the energy transferred to the system by heating. So basically you either know it or you don't. And if you do know it, it's an easy mark. Okay, the second question, it's a little bit tricky trying to do this wearing gloves. Um, here we've got uh, something where we're applying our current knowledge. So we've got a pretty simple diagram uh, where we've basically got an air bubble inside this hydraulic line where we've got this brake fluid on each side. 
and it says exactly what that is showing. And even if you don't know anything about bikes, even if you don't know what this really means, we're basically trying to look through the kind of um, all of the language used to say that basically we've got some gas which is being compressed. We then have some data about uh, the initial conditions for the volume, the pressure and the temperature. And during the braking process, the volume decreases by uh, a certain amount to this new value. And we just need to calculate the temperature and the pressure. So this question here is about applying your current or your own knowledge. And there are three AO2 marks available. Now, of course, when you do the exam, you don't know if these are AO1, AO2 or AO3 marks. You're just looking at the marks here. But if you actually look in the mark scheme, it does say how the marks are kind of um, allocated within the paper. So the first thing we always need to do is just write down an equation. Uh, okay, and then of course we know P1 and V1, we know V2, and we're trying to find the new pressure. So we can just rearrange this, and then we put in our numbers, and then we can work out the new pressure being equal to 2.3 times 10 to the 6 pascals. Okay, so that's the first part. The second thing we need to do is look at the new temperature. And that means the final temperature is 709 Kelvin. Of course, uh, if you want to go through this in slow time, I do have a full video where I explain this step by step. But basically what you're doing is you're writing down the equation, rearranging it, putting in some numbers. And then of course in the answer line, you'd give your final answer to an appropriate number of significant figures. Uh, for example, 2.3 times 10 to the six Pascals or 7.1 times 10 to the two Kelvin. Okay, now the last question in this is an AO3, so it's about interpreting some data. So looking at the question, it does say that the amount of work done when the brakes are pulled quickly, and we have this adiabatic change as we calculated previously, the work done is 10.8 millijoules. Uh, but of course, if the brake lever was pulled more slowly, then uh, the work done to compress the bubble to the same volume would be greater than 10.8. Um, so without calculation, are they correct? Now, of course, this is a kind of thing that they would only ever really discuss in a physics paper. In real life, people don't really mind too much about the actual amount of energy. They just care about how the bike feels. And if the brakes feel spongy, or if, for example, they're not working when you're actually applying the, the brake levers. So um, this is the kind of thing that I might write down for an answer like this. So applying the brake more slowly means that the internal energy stays constant because we've got energy loss due to heat transfer. And that means that the work done would actually be lower because we've got a lower pressure and therefore the cyclist is incorrect. So that last part of the question was an AO3 thing where we're looking at interpreting some data. Now, of course, in your exams, there will be questions about things that uh, you maybe haven't studied before, but a lot of the time, 42% of the time, if we're looking at the AO2 marks, you're applying what you know to new situations. And therefore, there are going to be questions which at first glance seem a little bit different, but if you actually read them and actually understand what it's asking you about and how that relates to what you currently know, you're going to be absolutely fine. Of course, if you'd like to find the full work solution to this, you can download the answers and see many, many more past papers. All you need to do is just head over to alevelphysicsonline.com.